Hello everyone, this is Al Red Sox Fan coming to you from Al Red Sox Fan YouTube Station. And we're going to bring you some Saturday Night Baseball. Just got done watching one of the Earls on Tabletop Baseball. Excellent channel. Check out Tabletop Baseball. And you can see the Earls play uh, Stratomatic and Appa and Pine Tar amongst many other games. The old dice baseball games. Really fun to watch. Brings back a lot of fun memories. So, check out Tabletop Baseball on YouTube. Great channel. Alrighty. Well, today's game is between my beloved 1960 Red Sox and the Kansas City Athletics in Kansas City. I've been playing this season. It's Ted Williams' swan song season. And it's not the exact team. I am playing out of the park uh, baseball 18. Yeah, I made a few trades, brought up a few players sooner than later. I have Carl Yastrzemski playing with Ted Williams. Quite cool. And uh, right now, the after the All-Star break, the Red Sox took the first game of this series and then promptly blew the second game of this series. So this is the rubber match between the Boston Red Sox and the Kansas City Athletics retro replay style 1960 July 17th in Kansas City. Let's go to the lineups, folks. For the Red Sox, Pete Reynolds batting first, playing second. Batting second, playing right field, Bobby Thompson. Not the Bobby Thompson shot heard around the world. This is Bobby Thompson, the flying Scotsman. Batting third, Teddy Ball game, Ted Williams. Coming back from the All-Star game, he was a starter. Also, Pete Reynolds was a starter. And Frank Malzone was a starter in the All-Star game. He's batting fourth, playing third base for the Red Sox. Batting fifth. The first baseman, Vic Wirtz. Batting sixth, acquired from a trade with the Chicago Cubs from their double A farm system, Billy Williams. Playing center, doing the catching, Jim Paglaroni. Batting seventh, Pumpsy Green batting eighth, playing short. And doing the pitching and batting ninth, Earl Wilson. Brought him up earlier than expected. The Kansas City Athletics leading off playing shortstop Dick Hauser. Batting second, the second baseman Jerry Lumpy. Batting third, the left field Norm Seaburn. Cyburn, sorry. Batting fourth, the third baseman Dick Williams, who would go on to manage the Red Sox Impossible Dream Team. Batting fifth, the first baseman Marv Throneberry. Batting sixth, the center fielder Bill Tuttle. Batting 7th, the right fielder, Russ Snyder. Batting 8th, the catcher, Hank Foyles. And batting ninth, and doing the pitching, Bud Daly. So Bud Daly's on the mound. And his battery mate, Hank Foyles. Above average defensive catcher. Good arm, 6 out of 10. Dick Williams, solid at third base, 6 out of 10 defensively. Dick, How Dick Hauser at shortstop, another future manager. Average shortstop, 5 out of 10. Jerry Lumpy, 6 out of 10, playing second base, above average. Marv Throneberry, first base, average. In the outfield, left field, Norn Cyburn. Average outfield, poor arm. Bill Tuttle in center field, above average, with a, with a very good arm, 10 out of 10. And the poorest of the three outfield, Russ Snyder. Fours across the board. So leading off for the Red Sox, Pete Reynolds, again, started in the All-Star game. If you haven't seen that game, it was absolutely fabulous. It's up on the channel now. It was a great game. Great pitching and some clutch hitting. So Pete Reynolds to lead off. Reynolds having a solid year. Left-handed batter versus the left-handed Bud Daly. Hank Foyles goes through the signs. Here's a pitch by Daly. As the computer is doing its thing, 
we await the pitch. And Reynolds hits a ball. Oh, a diving catch by Tuttle in center field, robbing Reynolds of a leadoff single at least. So with one out, Bobby Thompson comes to the plate, Red Sox right fielder today, playing for Carl Yastrzemski. Below average contact, average power. One out, no one on. Here's a pitch by Daly. And that ball's ripped deep to right field, going back on it to the track is Snyder. He makes the catch for out number two. How do you do, Beatles internally, my friend? Glad to see good friend Beatles eternally in the chat. We just came over from the Earl on Tabletop Baseball. Check them out, as I stated earlier in this broadcast. So two outs, nobody on. And Teddy Ballgame steps to the plate, also an all-star. He's a starting left fielder for the American League. So two outs, no one on. Williams at the plate. Foyles goes through the sign. The windup and the pitch to Williams. Williams sends that ball down the left field line and making a diving catch. Unbelievable cyber. Two diving catches by the Athletics outfield. Ends the inning. The leather is being flashed today, folks. Beatles eternally says, always good to be here. I appreciate that, Beatles. I do. Feel free to jump in the chat if you're watching live with Beatles and myself. Share your favorite baseball thoughts. What retro games are you playing right now? Love to hear about them. Dick Hauser to lead off for the Kansas City Athletics. On the mound for the Red Sox, Earl the Duke Wilson. Bad remake, Jim Pagaroni. Average defensively. Frank Malzone, the starting third baseman from the All-Star game at third for the Red Sox. Pumpsy Green at short. Pete Reynolds, all-star second baseman. And Vic Wirtz, he's in there for his bat, folks, not his defense. In left field, Ted Williams, and at this advanced age, not too good defensively. He will make the plays that he's supposed to make. Billy Williams. In center, solid field. And Bobby Thompson in right, flying Scotsman. So Dick Hauser comes to the plate. Hauser, a right-handed pull hitter. Red Sox shift left. Wilson gets a sign for Pags. Here's the pitch to Hauser. And again, we have to wait for the computer to do its thing. That ball's grounded to Malzone, over to Wirtz, and they just get him. Hauser tried to bunt his way on. Malzone came charging in and fired a Vic Wirtz at first. One up, one down. Now up, the athletic second baseman, Jerry Lumpy. Must be a solid contact hitter. No out, and one out, no one on, excuse me. The windup and the pitch to Lumpy. That ball's ripped up the middle. That's going to drop in front of Billy Williams. A one out single. Lumpy, not a threat to steal. Speed, one out of ten. Stealing, two out of ten. Pag's arm is five out of ten. Advantage, Pag. And that brings up the dangerous Norm Cyber. Good eye, above average contact and power. Left-handed pull hitter. Red Sox shift right. Wilson nods his head. He gets the sign. Here's the pitch of Cyber. And that ball's ripped to right. Center field on his horse is Thompson. He makes the catch. Retreating back to first is Lumpy. Hello, Tenacious Stroud. How you doing, my friend? Tenacious Strat, that's Earl, right? You're Earl, right? Because I... <laughs> Love your channel, man. Love tabletop baseball. Been plugging it. So, two outs. And if you're not Earl, I apologize 
thank you for joining me. Anyway, so Jerry Lumpy's at first, two outs. Dick Williams comes to the plate, future manager of the Boston Red Sox, 1967 Impossible Dream Team. Also the Oakland Athletics and uh, the Padres. He took three different teams to the World Series, I believe. All right, that is Earl. Great job tonight, Earl, as always. I'm just going to say one quick thing. People should check out Tabletop Baseball with Earl and Earl. They do a wonderful job. They play, and I'm going to use my layman's terms, dice baseball like when I was a kid. And a lot of people still play it, and I didn't realize this until I discovered them on YouTube. And it's a lot of fun to watch. If you're a baseball fan, it's very relaxing to watch them play the games and interact with the chat. So I recommend it. I also recommend if you have Steam, Out of the Park Baseball 18. It's on sale right now. Half price, $20. Lots of fun. Lots of different ways to play this game. I played as an open universe. For my 1960 replay of the Red Sox, I kind of stayed close to the vest. I did make a few minor trades because they stunk so bad, but not too many, and I did bring up a lot of minor leaguers. Anyway, back to the game. Two outs. Lumpy's on at first. Williams at the plate. Right-handed pull hitter. Red Sox shift left. The windup and the pitch by Wilson. That ball is sent out to right field. Thompson coming in and drops in front of him. Ah. First and second. Athletics have something going here with two outs bottom of the first. The dangerous Mark Thronberry comes to the plate. Pag Laroni goes through the signs. Wilson sets and delivers a Thronberry. Two on, two outs. Here's the pitch. And that ball's grounded to Wirtz, who flips it to the pitcher, but not in time. Infield hit, bases loaded. Ouch. And Bill Tuttle comes to the plate. Athletic center fielder. Average contact hit, hitter, not much power, good eye. Two outs, no place to put Tuttle. Pags goes through the sign. The windup and the pitch to Tuttle. And he strikes him out. Wilson comes up big. Strikeout with the bases loaded. We go to the top of the second. No score. Let me jump back in the chat. Uh, we have Beatles Eternally, good friend of the channel. And we also have Tenacious Strat, which is one of the Earls from Tabletop Baseball. Thank you very much for joining us. Greatly appreciate it. It's like having a celebrity on my channel. Awesome song. All right. Two up for the Red Sox. Malzone, Wirtz, and Williams to face Bud Daly. No score. Top of the second. Malzone, the all-star third baseman, comes to the plate. Dangerous hitter. Having a very good year. Righty-lefty matchup here. The windup and the pitch by Daly to Frank Malzone. Malzahn rips that ball towards second base. Lumpy goes towards the back and throws to first base. One out. Nice play by Jerry Lumpy. Now bring up the dangerous hitting Vic Words. Not much with the glove, but a very good power hitter for the 1960 Boston Red Sox. Lefty, lefty matchup here. Words actually hits lefties pretty well. Daly sets and delivers. And that ball goes out to center field, deep center field, going back on his tunnel, and he makes the catch right before the warning track. That is a cavernous center field here where the Athletics play, the Kansas City Athletics. Wow, that's deep. So two outs, no one on, and Billy Williams. I acquired Billy Williams from the Chicago Cubs. He was playing in double A. I offered them Frank Sullivan. They were looking for a veteran player. They said, would you like Billy Williams? I said, yes, let's sign this deal. So Billy Williams comes to play. He also is a left-handed batter, but he hits very well off left-handed pitching. Two outs, no one on. Foyles goes through the signs. Here's the pitch to Billy Williams. Williams grounds that ball to Lumpy. Goes to Thronberry, inning over. We go to the bottom of the second. Still no score. Two up for the Athletics. Snyder, Foyles, and the pitcher, Daly. Oh, you're going to 
take it, Earl. You are a celebrity, my friend. The two Earls love you guys. Love you guys. Table top baseball, baby. Check it out on YouTube. And if you don't know how to spell it, you can go to my channel under related channels. I have to actually put you up to feature channel. That way you're always on there. Anyway, so Snyder steps to the plate. Left-handed batter. Wilson. Toes the rubber. Here's the pitch to Snyder. That ball's ripped deep. Going back on his Thompson. He's not getting that. Snyder's going to touch them all. That's a home run to dead right. 373. Wow, he crushed that Earl Wilson offering. one nothing Athletics. Oh, boy. Red Sox... The 60s Red Sox trying to get back to 500. My whole goal with this team is to be a 500 baseball team in its fourth place. And right now we're two games behind the Washington Senators who are in fourth place. We currently stand at fifth place. So a, a solo home run to lead off the bottom of the second here by Snyder. one nothing Athletics. And now up to the plate, Hank Foyles. Very little power by Foyles. Right-handed batter. Pags goes through the sign. Here's the pitch to Foyles. Foyles pops that up. Pags throws his mask off. Makes the catch right before the dugout. Nice play by Jimmy Pagnaroni. So one out. The pitcher Bud Gailey comes to the plate. Left-handed batter. The wind-up and the pitch by Wilson. What's going on here? We're having some sort of freak out. Wow, that was very weird. Oh, my God, the pitcher. You know you're in trouble when the pitcher singles up the middle. I think he distracted him with the bat wielding. Take care, Al. Thank you for stopping by, my friend. So, Bud Daly's at first. One out. Hauser comes to the plate. Dick Hauser. Red Sox looking to turn two. Hauser, right-handed pull hitter. Here's the pitch to Hauser. And he strikes him out looking. So Wilson K's Hauser. Two outs now. Daly still at first. And Jerry Lumpy, the athletic second baseman, steps to the plate. Lefty righty matchup here for Earl Wilson. Wilson sets and delivers. And he walks him. So Lumpy's at first. Daly's at second. Two outs. Brings up the dangerous. Power hitting left fielder Norm Cyber for the Athletics. One swing of the bat, this could be 4 nothing. Pags goes through the sign. The windup and the pitch by Wilson. And another walk. Wilson is struggling here mightily in the bottom of the second. He's given up a solo home run now. He's walked the base loaded with two outs. And Dick Williams steps to the plate, right-handed pull hitter. Red Sox shift left. Looking to get the last out of this inning, get out of this jam. The windup and the pitch to Dick Williams. Williams rips that ball down the left field line. One run scores. Here comes a second run. The throw by Thompson. They got him out at the plate. What a throw by Thompson. Wow. Gunning out Lumpy. To keep this a 2-0 game, we go to the top of the third. Two up for the Red Sox. Pag the Roney Green and the pitcher Earl Wilson. What a throw by Thompson. Jimmy Pags, the catcher, steps to the plate. Pags has pretty good power. 6 out of 10. Excellent eye. 8 out of 10. Not much. Below average contact, though. Below average contact. He'll deal with Bud Daly, who's on the mound. The windup and the pitch to Jimmy Pags. And Pags, with that good eye, walks. A leadoff walk. 2-0 Athletics, top of the third. Pumpsy Green comes to plate, representing the tying run. He's playing shortstop today for the Red Sox. Righty-lefty matchup. The windup and the pitch by Daly. Green swing and a miss. Pags, a hit and run. Failed. It's a strike him out. Throwing him out. Double play. Ouch. Red Sox tried to get something going. They rolled the dice. Didn't work. Earl Wilson steps to the plate. Red Sox pitcher. Two outs. No one on. 
the windup and the pitch to Wilson. Wilson rips that ball down to third. That's going to go five to three. Inning over. They go to the bottom of third. Athletics two, the Red Sox nothing. Leading off for the Athletics, their first baseman, Marv Throneberry. Then it will be their center fielder, Tuttle, and their right fielder, Snyder. The windup and the pitch of Throneberry. Throneberry sends that ball up the middle. Nice play by Reynolds. He throws him out. Nice backhand. So one out. Bill Tuttle steps to the plate. Athletic center fielder. Righty righty matchup here. Paglaroni flashes the sign. Wilson sets and delivers to Tuttle. Slow ground ball. Pag jumps on it, throws the first, and they just get him. Nice throw by Jimmy Pag. So two outs on the number. No one on, and the right fielder Russ Snyder steps to the plate. Lefty righty matchup. The windup and the pitch by Wilson. Another ground ball. Works, dives, throws to the covering pitcher, but not in time. Snyder hustles it out for an infield hit. So two outs. Russ Snyder at first. He is a threat to steal. Six out of ten speed, eight out of ten stealing ability. Hank Foyles comes to the plate. Right-handed batting catcher. Chance to extend the inning here for the Athletics. Wirtz holding Snyder on. Wilson gets the sign. He sets and delivers to Foyles. That ball goes out to center field. Billy Williams coming in hard. And he makes the catch to end the inning. So we go to the top of the fourth. 2 nothing Athletics. Two up for the Red Sox, top of the order, Pete Reynolds, Bobby Thompson, and Teddy Ballgame, Ted Williams. Bud Daly back on the mound. So far pitching a gem, no hitter through three. The windup and the pitch to Reynolds. Lefty, lefty matchup. And Reynolds walks on the 3-1 pitch, off speed offering, misses. So a lead off walk, tying run comes to the plate, Bobby Thompson. Thompson does hit left-handed pitching quite well. That's why he's inserted in this game, folks. Play right field. Boyles goes through the signs. Throneberry holding Reynolds on at first. Daly's ready. The windup and the pitch to Thompson. And he walks Thompson on the 3-2 count. So back-to-back -back walks to start off this inning. Go ahead, run at the plate, Ted Williams. One swing of the bat, and the Sox will be up three to two. Let's see how they pitch the Teddy Ball game. The windup and the pitch to Williams. And Williams walks on the three-one count. Three consecutive walks, bases loaded, no outs, and the dangerous Frank Malzone comes to the plate. No place to put Frank. Foyles goes out to have a word with Daly. Now goes back behind the plate. The windup and the pitch to Malzone. Malzone groans that ball to third. He goes to first. Run scores, though, on the fielder's choice. Malzone gets an RBI on the ground out to third. As that went, Williams a thrown Barry advancing to third. Thomas advancing to second. Uh, Ted Williams, two to one now. Athletics. Will, uh, Williams represents the go-ahead run at second. Vic Works, dangerous power hitter for the Red Sox. Hits left-handed pitching quite well, even though he's a lefty. So two outs, two on. The windup and the pitch to Works. That ball's going deep to left center field, and. A three-run blast by Vic Wirtz. The Red Sox take the lead 4-2. He crushed that offering by Daly. 420 feet. Wow. Red Sox come roaring back to pass the Athletics now. So one out base is empty. 
and Philly Williams comes to the plate. Red Sox center fielder, lefty lefty matchup here. Daly is in shock. Words crush that offering. Wow, he's got to get it out of his mind though. Boyles goes through the signs. Daly nods his head. He sets and delivers to Billy Williams. Williams grounds that ball to Lumpy, who goes to Throneberry out number two. Jimmy Paglaroni steps to plate, two outs, nobody on. 4-2 lead now for the Red Sox, thanks to the three-run blast by Wirtz. Pags awaits the offering, the windup and the pitch. Pags sends that ball out to right center field. And making the catch is Tuttle. Inning over, but damage done. Red Sox take the lead 4-2 on the Vic Wirtz three-run blast. We go to the bottom of the fourth. 4-2 Sox. Two up for the Athletics. Daly, then the top of the order. Hauser and Lumpy. Daly steps into the batter's box. Left-handed batter. Let's see what the pitcher can do here. The windup and the pitch by Earl Wilson. Again, Daly does that weird thing with his bat. Here's the pitch, and Daly smashes another hit. Unbelievable in the left center field. He does that twirling thing with his bat, taunting Wilson, it looks like. Another single for Bud Daly. He's got two hits. He's the pitcher, batting ninth for the Athletics. So Dick Hauser comes to plate. Daly's at first. No outs. Red Sox shift left on the right-handed pull hitter, Hauser. The windup and the pitch. And he walks Hauser. So right away, Wilson has allowed the pitcher to get a hit, and then he walks the leadoff batter. The Athletics are right in business again. Down two with two on. Lumpy represents a go-ahead run at home. Hauser, the tying run at first. Lefty-righty matchup here. Jim Pagliaroni flashes the sign. Wilson nods his head. He sets and delivers to Lumpy. Grounded back. They're going to turn two, I think. No. They get the runner in the middle. So that went six. That went uh, fielder's choice, one to six. They wipe out Hauser at second. Daly advances to third. Lumpy reaches on the fielder's choice. So one out. Still in danger here, Earl Wilson is. Norm Cyburn steps to the plate. Athletics left fielder. He has the ability to put the A's up by one. Seven out of, six out of ten power, seven out of ten eye. Red Sox looking to turn two here. The windup and the pitch of Cyburn. Cyburn sends that ball out to left field. Ted Williams moving over. He can't get to it. It drops in front of him. One run scores on the single. It's now four to three. Boston. One out. Runners at first and second. Dick Williams comes to the plate. Right-handed pull hitter. Red Sox infield shifts left. Outfield straight away and normal. Again, the Red Sox want to turn two here. The windup and the pitch to Dick Williams. That ball's ripped. Left center field gap. Williams cuts it off, and they hold the runner at third. Wow. I thought they'd send him on. on Williams is a weak throwing arm, but Lumpy's really slow. One out of ten, so Williams' four out of ten arm looks awesome compared to that. So base is loaded. One out. 4-3 Red Sox. A's threatening. Marv Thronberry comes to the plate. Looking to get 4 for 1 swing. 7 out of 10 power here against the uh, right-handed Troy Wilson for the left-handed batting Thronberry. No place to put him. The windup and the pitch by Wilson. That ball's ripped to words. That's going to be a double play. They're out of it. So that went... Three to six to three. Wow, nice play by Vic Wirtz. Not known for his glove. Turns a marvelous double play there. Red Sox cling to a one-run lead as we go to the top of the fifth. Two up for the Red Sox. Pumpsy Green 
Earl Wilson, the pitcher, then the top of the order, Pete Reynolds. But Daly still out on the mound, and why not? He has two hits for the Athletics. Daly gets the sign, the windup, and the pitch to Green. And Green rips that ball past the diving Hauser for a single in the left center. So Pumpsy Green's at first. Earl Wilson comes to the plate. Not a bad hitting pitcher, to be honest with you. Green, 6 out of 10. He could be a threat to steal. Hank Foyle's catcher arm, 6 out of 10. So that's an even matchup. He's being held on by Throneberry, though. And Daly's a lefty. The windup and the pitch to Earl Wilson. Green's on the move. The ball's grounded to third. Over to five. Oh, bad throw by Williams. Runners are now at second and third on the error by Dick Williams. Red Sox are in business here, folks. No out, second and third. Costly error by Williams at third base. Pete Reynolds, all-star second baseman, steps to the plate. Lefty-lefty matchup. He can knock in two. The windup and the pitch by Daly. And he strikes him out on the slider on the 3-2 count. So one out, second and third, and now Bobby Thompson. Red Sox right fielder comes to the plate. Flying Scotsman. He's got two ducks out on the pond that he can knock in. Foils flash the signs. The windup and the pitch to Thompson. Thompson sends that ball out in the shallow center field, coming on and making a dive and catches Tuttle. Tagging up from third and scoring is Pumpsy Green. The Red Sox go up 5-3. to three. So there's two outs now. Earl Wilson at second. Teddy Ballgame steps to the plate. Ted Williams, swan song season. Last call for Teddy. Lefty-lefty matchup. He'd love to go yard here. The windup and the pitch to Williams. A wild pitch way outside. Wilson advances the third as, as Daly looks discombobulated on that rubber. Williams in the driver's seat now. Two outs. Runner at third. The windup and the pitch by Daly. Williams grounds it to Lumpy, who goes the first inning over, but the Red Sox score on the sacrifice fly. It's now 5-3. to three. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Due up for the Kansas City Athletics, Tuttle, Snyder, and Foyle. Bill Tuttle, athletic center fielder, wants to get start off something this inning. A's trail by two. The windup and the pitch to Tuttle. That ball sent in the shallow left center field. Billy Williams makes a diving catch. Outstanding glove work by Billy Williams. Robbing Tuttle of a leadoff single. Possibly more if that ball gets by Billy Williams. So one out and now Russ Snyder comes to the plate. Lefty righty matchup. Jimmy Pags and Wilson can't get on the same page. Now Paglaroni goes through the signs again. Wilson nods in agreement. The wind up and the pitch to Snyder. And he strikes him out. That's a third strikeout for Earl Wilson. Red Sox throw the ball around. Two outs, nobody on, and Hank Foyle steps up plate. Athletics catcher. The windup and the pitch to Foils. That ball's ripped to short. Pumpsy Green throws the works. Inning over. We go to the top of the six. Red Sox five. Kansas City three. Two up for the Red Sox. Frank Malzone, Vic Wirtz, and Billy Williams. Now Zone gets in the batter's box. He awaits the pitch from Daly. Daly sets and delivers. 
Malzone grounds it to Williams. Over to Throneberry. One away. Five to three if you're scoring at home. Vic Wirt steps to the plate, and he's had the big hit of the game. A three-run blast the left center to put the Red Sox ahead at the time, four to two. Sox now lead five to three. Lefty lefty matchup here. Let's see if Daly will make another mistake to Wirtz. Here's the pitch. Wirtz pops it up. Calling for it is Lumpy, and he makes the catch at second base. So two outs, no one on. Billy Williams steps to the plate. What an outstanding catch the Red Sox center fielder made in the bottom of the fourth. He'd love to send one yard here. The windup and the pitch to Billy Williams. Two outs, nobody on. Williams swing and a miss, inning over. That's three strikeouts for Daly. We go to, uh, to the bottom of the six, five, three Red Sox. Two up for the Athletics. The pitcher, Daly. They might go to a pinch hitter, though. Then top of the order, Hauser and Lumpy. Daly has two hits today off Earl Wilson. Let's see if he can make it three. Wilson sets and delivers to Daly. That's grounded to Wirtz. Wirtz takes it to the bag himself. So they finally get Daly out. So one out, no one on, Dick Hauser steps to the plate. Athletic shortstop, right-handed pull hitter, Red Sox shift left in the infield defensively, straight away and normal in the outfield. Jimmy Paglaroni goes through the side. Here's the pitch to Hauser. And he strikes him out looking, that's K number four for Earl Wilson. Two outs, no one on. Athletic second baseman Jerry Lumpy steps to the plate. Wilson working quickly. Here's the pitch to Lumpy. That slow ground ball to Wilson. He fires the works inning over. Cat like quickness by Earl Wilson came quickly off that mound and fired a strike to first. And now up for the Red Sox, Jimmy Pagliaroni, followed by Pumpsy Green, and then the pitcher Earl Wilson. Go to the top of the seven. Red Sox still lead the A's by two, five to three. Pags has some power here, six out of ten. He'd love to get a hold of one. The wind up and the pitch by Bud Daly. Pags rips that ball down the right field line. Let's see if he can get two out of this. No, quickly gotten to by Snyder, holding Jimmy Pags to a single. Pags runs as slow as dirt, one out of ten. Speed, 1 out of 10 steal. You would call Jimmy Pags a catcher who goes station to station. So, 1 out, nobody on. Pumpsy Green comes to the plate. Red Sox with Green up, I believe, in a similar situation, if I remember correctly. Had to strike him out, throw him out, double play on the failed hit and run. The windup and the pitch to Green. Green bunts the ball, and a quick throw to first, and they just get him. Throneberry came charging in hard. Lumpy covered the bag, and they just nipped Pumpsy Green, but the sacrifice bunt works. Pag the Roney's now at second with one out in scoring position for the pitcher Earl Wilson, who's not a bad hitting pitcher, mind you. Righty lefty matchup here. Daly sets and delivers to Wilson. Wilson singles up the middle, and here comes Jimmy Pags. Here comes a throw. It's cut off. Red Sox now lead 6-3. RBI single for Earl Wilson, helping his own cause. So one out. Wilson at first. Top of the order. Pete Reynolds for the Red Sox comes to play. Dangerous hitter. Red Sox looking to break this game wide open, folks. Here's the pitch to Reynolds. Reynolds rips that ball past the diving Hauser in the left center field. First and second one out. Bobby Thompson comes up late. Righty lefty matchup. Thompson has shown that he does have some power. 
coils goes through the signs. Daly nods his head. The windup and the pitch to Thompson. And that's grounded to Lumpy. And that's going to be... No, they can't turn the double play. Thompson running hard all the way. Stays out of the double play. Fielder's choice. Runner is forced at second. So first and third, two outs, and Ted Williams comes to the ball. Uh, to the plate, excuse me. Teddy ball game, looking to rip one. The windup and the pitch by Daly. And Williams crushes that ball to dead right. See you later. That is goodbye gone. 370 feet. The Red Sox extend their lead to 9 to 3 on that crush shot by Teddy Ball game. Wow. Always glad to see Williams go deep. Beatles eternally says, The words Homer was huge. Yes, it was. And then he says, Pags is slower than he looks. He's slower than slow, Beatles. Ted Williams has crushed a three-run bomb. Red Sox lead nine to three. Top of the seventh. They've broken this game wide open. Frank Malzone comes to the plate. Two outs, no one on. Here's the pitch to Malzone. Malzone rips that ball past Hauser. That's a two-out single. The hit parade continues. The Red Sox, who were held hitless for the first three innings, now have seven hits and nine runs. Vic Wirtz. Who's already homered to left center field, steps to the plate, and a pitching change. Jerry Davis comes into the game. As you see, I could not find a pitcher for Jerry Davis, so I used the uniform. So two outs, Malzone at first. Davis sets and delivers to Wirtz. And Wirtz singles up the middle. Another two out hit. First and second, Billy Williams comes to the plate with two outs. Let's see what Billy Williams can do off Jerry Davis. Malzone at second, Wirtz at first. You could say not much speed on the base pad, but you'd probably be lying. It's less than much speed than on the base pad. It's slow. Malzone two out of ten, Wirtz two out of ten for speed. The windup and the pitch to Williams, two outs, two on. Williams sends that ball out to left field, coming on and making the catch is Sagarn. Inning over, the Red Sox score four and take a 9-3 lead. The hit of the inning, the Ted Williams home run. What a blast it was, folks, as they play take me out to the ball game here in Kansas City. And I think the fans are saying, take me home. Two up to face Earl Wilson, who's still on the mound for the Red Sox. Norm Seiberg, Dick Williams, and Marv Throneberry. As the organist finishes up, take me out to the ball game to the cheers of the Kansas City Athletic fans here at the stadium. All right, Wilson steps back out on the mound, toes the rubber, the wind up, and the pitch of Seiberg. And he strikes him out looking. That is K number five for Earl Wilson. So with one out, the Red Sox leading nine to three in the bottom of the seven. Dick Williams steps to the plate. Athletics third baseman, right-handed pull hitter. Once again, the Red Sox infield shift left. Outfield straight away and normal. Wilson working quickly. He gets the sign from Jimmy Pagnarone. Here's the pitch to Williams. And that ball is ripped and drops in front of Ted Williams. Again, that's where Williams' defensive liabilities come into play there. A better outfielder might have caught that ball. So a one-out single. But we love Ted Williams, so say lucky. So one out. Here comes Marv Thronberry. Dangerous power-hitting first baseman for the Athletics. If he, if he homers, he can inch the Athletics closer to the Red Sox. Red Sox moving to double play depth. Here's the pitch of Throneberry. Williams at first, one down. Throneberry goes down swinging. 
I believe that's strikeout number six now for Wilson. So two outs. Williams at first and Bill Tuttle, the athletic center fielder, comes up to bat. Tuttle looking to extend this inning. The windup and the pitch by Wilson. That ball's ripped to second. Reynolds goes to first, inning over. Single wasted. We go to the top of the eighth. Two up for the Red Sox. Jimmy Pagliaroni, Pumpsy Green, and the pitcher, Earl Wilson. Jerry Davis still out on the mound for the Athletics. Gets the sign from Foyles. He sets and delivers. Pags grounds it to Hauser, who throws him out. That goes six to three. One up, one down. Pumpsy Green steps up late. Red Sox shortstop. Looking to get an on base with an out here. Top of the eighth. Jerry Davis sets in, delivers to Green. Green sends that ball to right center field, and that's going to drop in for a one-out single in front of Snyder. Cuts it off, throws back towards the infield. So Green's at first, the pitcher Earl Wilson steps to plate. He has an RBI single today. Here's the pitch to Wilson. Wilson sends that ball to Hauser, who throws another bad throw to first. Unbelievable! And we have second and third. That is Hauser's second throwing error of the game. Red Sox are in business again. Up nine to three. One out. And at the top of the order, Pete Reynolds comes to the plate. He's got two ducks out on the pond he can knock in. Jerry Davis is kind of shaking his head, mumbling to himself on the mound. Foyles goes out and has a word with him. Now goes back behind the plate. Everything's all set now. Foyles flashes the sign. Here's the pitch to Reynolds. Reynolds sends that ball up the middle. One run scores. It's now 10 to 3. RBI single. For Pete Reynolds. As Pumpsy Green scored from third. And Bobby Thompson, the Red Sox right fielder, steps up late. One out, runners at the corners. Jerry Davis winds and delivers. And he walks Bobby Thompson. Base is loaded with one out. Red Sox leading 10 to three. They've split the first two games of the series. This is the rubber match. Red Sox. Red Sox trying to creep closer to that 500 mark in fourth place. They're two games behind the Washington Senators. That is the 1960s Red Sox gold finishing fourth and up either at 500 or above. Ted Williams comes up late and he has homered already. A bomb to right field. Davis sets and delivers to Williams. No place to put him. Base is loaded. One away. Williams sends that ball past Hauser. One run scores. Another RBI for Ted Williams. As the Red Sox going station to station. Base is still loaded. 11 to 3 Sox now. And the dangerous Frank Malzone steps to the plate. Malzone, all-star third baseman. He's got four ducks out on the pond here. Foyles goes through the signs. Here's the pitch to Malzone. Malzone sends that ball past the diving Dick Williams. Another run scores. Bases loaded once again. It's now 12 to 3. Red Sox have blown the doors open off this game. The front door, the back door, the side doors. They've blown every door open. And the dangerous Vic Wirt steps to the plate. He's homer today. 12 to 3 Red Sox. No place to put words. Jerry Davis on the mound. Looks like this mess is his till the end. Here's the pitch to Wirtz. And Wirtz sends that ball on the right field. Snyder coming on. He makes the catch. So two outs. Runners hold. Base is still loaded. Billy Williams comes to the plate here for the Red Sox. Hello, Ken Castro. As he says, let's go Sox. Oh, they're going. They're going a lot. <laughs> this is the rubber game of the series, Ken. They split the first two games. 
So base is loaded, two outs, Billy Williams at the plate. Lefty lefty matchup here. Hank Foyles flashes the signs. Jerry Davis nods his head. Not much good that's done so far. Here's the pitch to Williams. Williams rips that ball past the diving first baseman. Another run scores. He has an RBI single. It's now 13 to 3. Bases still loaded. Gene Stevens comes in to run for Ted Williams at third. That'll be the ball game for Teddy Ball game. Willi uh, Stevens will stay in to play left field. And Jimmy Paggs comes to the plate. Let's see if he can continue this hit parade. To think the Red Sox were being shut out and no hit after three innings, and they've exploded now for 13 runs and 13 hits. They lead the Athletics, the Kansas City Athletics, 13 to three. Top of the eighth, two outs, bases loaded. Here's the pitch to Jimmy Paggs. Paggs singles into the, between the fielders. It's now 14 to three. The hit parade continues. Jimmy Paggs has an RBI single. Base is still loaded, two outs. Pumpsy Green steps to plate. It's like as Yogi Berra said, deja vu all over again. Groundhog Day. Where's Bill Murray? So let's see if Pumpsy Green can continue this nightmare for the Kansas City Athletics. Davis is basically dumbfounded on the mound, shell-shocked. He'll try once again to get the third and final out here in the top of the eighth. Here's the pitch to Pumpsy Green. Green rips that ball past Dick Williams. One run scores. Here comes the second run. Here comes the throw to the plate. It's cut off. Two run score on the Green single. It's now 16 to three. And what fans were here are now leaving. 16 to three and now the pitcher steps to the plate. Well, this is a little different. Bases aren't loaded. And it's only first and second now. Once again, Davis will try to get the third and final out here in this massacre of an inning. The Red Sox have scored seven runs. And now lead 16 to three. Here's the pitch to Earl Wilson. Wilson sends that ball into center field, coming on his turtle, and he makes the diving catch. What a play, and mercifully, this inning is over for the Kansas City Athletics. But the nuke was dropped. The Red Sox score seven, and now lead as we go to the bottom of the eighth, 16 to three. Two up for the Kansas City Athletics. Snyder foils, and the pitcher Davis, most likely a pitch hitter, will be up. Wilson wants to work quickly. He's almost giddy out on the mound. Here's the pitch to Snyder. That ball's grounded up the middle. Pumpsy Green makes a diving stop but holds the ball. An infield hit for Snyder. So Snyder's on and Hank Foyles comes to the plate. Red Sox move to double play depth. Gene Stevens is now in left field. He replaced Ted Williams. Joe Morgan, I'm sorry, replaced Pumpsy Green. It was Morgan who dived and held the ball. And Jim Busby has come in for defensive purposes, 9 out of 10 defensively, to replace Billy Williams. Ron Jackson comes in defensively to replace Vic Wirtz, 8 out of 10 defense, at first base. Snyder at first, here's the pitch to Foyles. That ball's ripped to Malzone, that's going to be a double play, 5 to 4 to 3. One for two. So there's two outs, no one on. And the pitch hitter, Bob Serve, steps in plate. Seven out of ten power. Dangerous power hitter. Righty, righty matchup. Wilson seems to be laboring slightly. Paglaroni goes out and has a word with him. Now goes back behind the plate. Looks like Wilson wants to finish off this game. Here's the pitch to Serve. Serve sends that ball in the shallow outfield, going back on it, making the catch is Pete Reynolds, the second baseman. Inning over. We go to the top of the ninth. Do up for the Red Sox. Carl Yastrzemski's coming in. 
you hit for Runnels. It looks like, okay. Johnny Nux now on the mound for the Athletics. All right, lefty-righty matchup. Here's the pitch to Yaz. Yaz rips that ball down the right field line. That drops in. He's going to try to get two, and he does. He beats the relay throw. A leadoff double for Yastrzemski. I think... I had put Yastrzemski at second. I missed telling you guys that. Sorry about that. So, yeah, as a leadoff double, Bobby Thompson steps to the plate. The flying Scotsman. He'd love to knock a run in here. 16-3, top of the ninth, Boston. Here's the pitch by Cux. And he walks Thompson. So first and second, no outs. Gene Stevens gets his first at bat. He replaced Ted Williams as a pinch runner. Ken Castro says a slaughter and not Enos. Very good. I like that, Ken. So a lefty righty matchup here. The wind up and the pitch to Stevens. Stevens rips that ball the right center field gap. No one's getting that. That's going to the wall. One run scores. Two run scores. Stevens has a double and two RBIs. It's now 18 to three. I wish the Red Sox could save some of these runs when they play some of the better teams. Frank Malzone comes to the plate. Wow. If this was a fight, they would stop it. The referee would have jumped in by now, waving his arms to stop it. But it's baseball, and it's not little league. There's no mercy rule. As they sit in the karate kid, I believe mercy is for the weak. Alrighty. Malzone at the play. Here's the pitch to Frank. Malzone sends that ball down the line. And Williams throws him out for out number one. Steven stays at second base. So Ron H. Jackson steps the plate. He came in for defensive purposes to play first. Replacing the very poor fielding, Vic Wirtz. Jackson getting his first at bat in this game. Stevens at second, one down. The windup and the pitch by Cux. Jackson sends that ball past two diving infielders, and another run's going to score. 19 to 3 RBI single by Ron Action Jackson. So Jim Busby, who came in for defensive purpose to play center field. Replacing Billy Williams gets his first at-bat of the game. One out, Jackson at first. Here's the pitch to Busby. Busby grounds that to Hauser. That's going to be a double play. Six to four to three, inning over. And mercifully, in three outs, this game will be over. Beatles eternally says, geez, D-Day wasn't this bloody. This is like, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, this is like the Red Wedding, for God's sakes. Boy, the Starks didn't fare well at the Red Wedding. Ken Castro says crazy. Now, the next game I play with these guys, they won't score two runs. So Dick Hauser steps to the plate. It'll be Hauser, Lumpy, and Cyburn. Top of the order. Earl Wilson trying to close it out here. Trying to get a complete game victory. Red Sox lead 19-3. Here's the pitch by Wilson to Hauser. And he walks him. Really, Earl? Really? Nine, a 16-run lead. Just lob it over the plate, son. Hauser's at first. Jerry Lumpy comes to the plate. Here's the pitch to Lumpy. And that ball sent deep, 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 and gone. Jerry Lumpy takes out some revenge and aggravation with a two-run bomb to right center field. 396 it went. And the Athletics have something going. 19 to 5, no outs. Did I sound sincere when I said that? Because I was kidding. <laughs> Norn Cybern steps to the plate, and that's it for Wilson. They've taken him out of the game. Chet Nichols steps to the on the mound, left-handed pitcher looking to get the garbage outs here. Get out of this game with a Red Sox victory. 
he'll face the left-handed Norm Cyber. Nichols sets and delivers. That's a grounder to Jackson. Goes to the back. One out. Red Sox two outs away from having a mercy killing here. Dick Williams comes to the plate. Nichols sets and delivers, working quickly. That ball goes up the middle and past the diving Lee Stremski. A one out single. Red Sox moving to double play depth. Marv Throneberry steps to the plate. Another lefty lefty matchup for Nichols. Let's see if they can get two for one and end this misery. Here's the pitch of Throneberry. That ball is lined to Jackson. Nice play. Two outs. Getting back to first base is Dick Williams. So it's up to Bill Tuttle to extend this game. God, I hope not. Ken Castro said the Bee's best friend, Lumpy. That's right. No! No. Yes! Larry Mandela. Was Larry Mandela Lumpy? Little, little pause from the game, talking a little leave it to Beaver trivia here. Lumpy. No, was that Wally's friend, Lumpy? I think that was Wally's friend. I don't think Larry McDevil was Lumpy. And then there's the always famous Mrs. Cleaver. You look lovely today, Eddie Haskell. All right. Two outs, Williams at first, Tuttle at the plate, and now Dick Raditz is coming to get the last out of this game. Give him a little work. The windup and the pitch from Raditz. Oh, God, really, Raditz? Throw strikes. He walks Tuttle. Russ Snyder comes to play. Again, we mercifully await the last out of this game. I'm joyous that the Red Sox are winning 19 to 5, but I'd like to see the last out. Runners at first and second, two outs. Pagliaroni just looks at Raditz and says, throw whatever you want. Here's the pitch to Snyder. That ball's grounded to Morgan, who goes to Yastrzemski. Ball game over, mercifully. The Red Sox win 19 to 5. And Ken Castro says, yes, Wally. Okay, cool. That's what I thought. Love Leave It to Beaver. Especially when they were young. Funny, funny stuff. Alright, let's go to the final box score here. Red Sox win 19 to 5. A's do score 2 in the ninth. Red Sox now move ever so closer to 500. 39 wins, 46 losses. So that's uh, 7 games under. It's an achievable goal by the 1960 Red Sox. Athletics dropped to 31 and 53. Their record smells like poo because it is poo. Winning pitcher Earl Wilson. Wilson's now six and four. Oh, I got to bring the box score up. Excuse me. Sorry about that. And there's the box score. Beatles eternally says that General Custard is scrapped off the field. Scraped off the field. Yes, he was. And so were the Kansas City Athletics. All right, there's the box score. We're going to quickly go through this massacre. I think we'll just do the pitching. Earl Wilson gets the win, 6-4. and four. Eight innings. Gave up 13 hits. He scattered 13 hits for five runs. All earned. Walked four, struck out six, gave up two home runs. Chet Nichols went two and a third, gave up a hit. Dick Raditz got the last out of the ninth. For the Athletics, Daly now three wins, ten losses, went six and two thirds. He actually had a no hitter after three innings. But then the doors, the wheels, and everything came off. Seven hits, nine runs, eight of them earned. Walked four, struck out three, gave up two bombs. One to Vic Wirtz and one to Teddy Ballgame, Ted Williams. Davis came in, pitched an inning and a third. Eight hits. He was in the massacre inning. 
uh, seven, well, they're all massacre innings after the third. Uh, eight hits, seven runs, only two earned. A lot of bad feeling behind him. One walk, no Ks. Then Cux came in. One inning, three hits, three runs, all earned, one walk. Thus, the 19-5 win for the Boston Red Sox. Player of the game, Ted Williams. And we'll just go through his numbers. Ted Williams, that's Dick Williams, sorry. Ted Williams was two for four. Two runs, scored four RBIs, walked once, and he only left one runner on base. Pete Reynolds for the Red Sox, two for four, two runs, one RBI, one walk, one K. Yastrzemski, one for one. He came in for Reynolds, played second, one run scored. Bobby Thompson, uh, no hits and two at-bats, but he had four runs scored as he walked a few times. As he walked three times, and they reached on a fielder's choice, I believe. And he had one RBI on a ground out. I already told you, Ted Williams, Gene Stevens came in to pinch run and replaced him playing left field. Stevens was one for two, one for one. Two runs scored, two RBIs. Malzone, two for six, two RBIs, a run scored. It was just a hit parade. Works, two for five, three RBIs, one run scored. Ron Action Jackson off the bench, one, one, one for one with an RBI. Billy Williams, one for five, one run scored, one RBI. Busby, 0 for one, came off the bench to play center. Pagliaroni, two for four, run scored, RBI, and a walk. Humpsy Green, three for four, two RBIs, two runs scored, struck out once. Joe Morgan came in defensively to play short, didn't get that bat. Earl Wilson, the pitcher, one for five, two runs scored, one RBI. Chet Nichols and Raditz finished off the ninth inning and did not get in that bat. Woo, that was tough to do. Now for the Athletics, might as well do them. Hauser won for three. Uh, Lumpy, Wally's friend from the Beaver. No, not really, but it's kind of funny. Two for four, one run scored, two RBIs, one walk. Cyburn, one for four, one RBI, one walk, one K. Dick Williams, Dick Williams, stellar day at the plate. Five for five with an RBI. But he made, uh, no, Hauser made the two throwing out errors, I'm sorry. Williams, I believe, made one error also. Yep. Hauser and Williams, the left side of the infield, made the errors for the Athletics. Marv Thronberry, 1 for 5, 1 K. Tuttle, 0 for 4, a walk and a K. Snyder, pretty good game for him. Pretty much a light hitting right fielder. 3 for 5, RBI. And run scored, a K. I think he actually homered, thinking back. Uh. Maybe he didn't homer. Yes, Snyder did homer in the second off Wilson. Then Lumpy homered off Wilson in the ninth. Okay. And Foyles, the catcher, 0 for 4. Daly, the pitcher, had two hits. He was 2 for 4 with 2, two for 3, I'm sorry, with 2 runs scored. Davis came in and just got hammered. He didn't get that bat. Bob Sir pinch hit for him, 0 for 1. Then Cooks came in and finished off the game. And that's it, folks. Oh, let's read the recap. What the heck? It wasn't just another day at the ballpark for Dick Williams the Kansas City Athletics. Williams went on a tear at Municipal Stadium and cracked hit after hit off Boston pitching. He went 5-for-5. Five five. They didn't win, but he went 5 for 5s I don't think Dick Williams would want to be interviewed after a game after getting hammered like that, even if he went 5-for-5. Five five. He was a bit of an intense human being. He said, yeah, it'll be something nice to tell the grandkids, but I don't think I'll tell them we lost, he joked in a post-game interview. Despite Williams' personal accolades, the Red Sox walked off the field with a 19-5 win. Williams singled in the first, hit an RBI single in the second, singled in the fourth, singled in the seventh, singled in the ninth. This season in 80 games, Williams is hitting at a 275 clip with 87 hits, 15 home runs, and 60 RBIs, and 39 runs scored. That's Dick Williams of the Athletics, not Ted Williams. So this is how Red Sox fans saying, 
Oh, you know what? It was Dick Williams who was the player of the game. I said Ted Williams because I saw Williams. Let's go back down here for a second. I just realized, no, player of the game, Ted Williams. So why do they interview Dick Williams on the losing team? I don't know. I don't control the media. All right. So in finale, Red Sox 19, Athletics 5. The Red Sox record now goes to 39-46. Only seven games below 500. We can get there before season's end. Now, Red Sox fans saying thank you very much for joining me. Thank you to Beatles Eternally. Thank you to Ken Castro. Thank you to Tenacious Strat, a.k.a. Earl, who jumped in earlier. Greatly appreciate everyone who watched. Remember to check out Tabletop Baseball. Great channel. Dice Baseball on YouTube. Love it. All right. Until I see you next time, I might come back with another game. I don't know. This one took a lot out of me, even though it was enjoyable. Sal Red Sox fans saying health and happiness. Bye-bye. God bless.